just to give you an introduction how it will come about uh, this mature faith say with me mature faith so for example James chapter 1 verse 3 you the Bible talks about uh, the testing of your faith and James chapter 1 verse uh, 1 verse 2 you will see it for example knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh uh, verse 3 worketh patient verse 4 the trying of your faith worketh say with me worketh verse 4 but the patient ha let patient have her perfect work that you might be perfect and it perfect see that's the, another word for fullness perfect shout perfect. perfect can you lift your hands and say it perfect perfect, perfect means doesn't mean you don't have any uh, weaknesses and and faults perfect means maturity you get into the point of maturity so that let that faith come into maturity it would be testing so that to give you an introduction of that faith this is what it looked like for example it doesn't have to feel to believe it I'm gonna say it again that mature faith that faith is coming into the fullness I'm gonna give you in a moment what look like what are the evidence of that faith how does that mega faith look like but to give you an introduction just just to know what we get it into I want you to see you don't have to feel it there's so many people stuck into their feeling I don't feel it I don't worship God because I don't feel it I don't give any offering because I don't feel it Shut up. don't feel it is faith mature faith the fullness of faith may have had nothing to do with feeling how many times you got up and, and, and you saw you feel disgusted discouraged you feel horrible and you still get up to pray and, and give praise to God. I need the musicians. I'm going to say it again. Because you don't walk by feeling, you walk by faith. Don't let your senses dictate to you what you believe. Sometimes you feel horrible. Sometimes you want to throw the towel. Sometimes you feel like I'm, I'm messed up. I, I don't want it. I, I, but you get up again because mature faith. You will see the mature people will walk in faith that had nothing to do with feeling. Number two, they don't need a physical touch. In other words, there's some people that they said, well, if, if the apostle don't teach me, don't touch me, I, I don't believe it. Well, mature faith, mega faith, don't look like you don't need a touch. You get it directly from God. You, you appropriate. You take it by force. You don't need a touch. Touch your neighbor. Tell them, I don't need to be touched. Tell them, I get it now. Can I hear an amen, people? You know the struggle that I have with people that they're waiting for somebody to touch them to be healed? You need to get it like receive it now. Number three is this kind of faith. And, and I'm saying just as an introduction, but I'm going to show you exactly what this mega faith looked like. The introduction is you don't have way for feeling. Number two is a type of faith that goes beyond your thinking and reason. Is, is something that is beyond what you think, what you, you say, the how, how, how. It, it goes beyond that. And lastly, this is the mega faith that I would say is when you lose your mind. Why your mind? Because your mind is your reason. In your mind is your reason. And your reason will always give you reason why you're not going to get your miracle. So reason is in the middle. If reason is in the middle, but this kind of mega faith is going to go beyond your head. You need to lose your mind. Touch your neighbor and tell him, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> Are you ready to lose your mind? Okay, so that's an introduction of what it's going to be. But let me give you exactly what, what I want to say. Touch your neighbor and tell him, Are you ready to lose your mind? When you say, I'm going to open a multi-million dollar business, people will say, are you, did you lose your mind? You say, yes. <laughs> when people say, I'm going to have a mega ministry, you say, are you losing your mind? And you say, yes. Amen. Come on, Dad, can, don't stop. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you stand for a moment? 
and give a little dance. I'm gonna lose my mind. Now you're too late. Come on. There's so many of you who said, I don't feel to dance. Do it by faith at least. <laughs> Your seat. Come on, in Jesus' name. Okay, I want you to write this down, please. What the end time mega faith looks like. In other words, how many people here consider to be the remnant? End time remnant. I want to see your hands. If you consider yourself the end time remnant, then be ready to look like this. I'm going to say, I'm going to look like mega. Number one, let me, let me write it down. Let's go to Luke chapter 18, verse 8. This is what the picture of a mega faith. This is the picture. I just told you the introduction. There's any feeling. is beyond reason. And, and it's somebody that lost their mind. It's somebody, you lose your mind. So this is what the end time mega faith look like. And if you're remnant, you will say, you know what? I will look like that. Amen. My faith will look like that. Number one, look chapter 18, verse 8. So number one, mega faith is what Jesus is looking for when he comes back. Amen. He's not looking for the mustard seed faith. Many people think if I have a mustard seed faith, no. No, he's not looking for his little mustard seed faith. When he's coming back, he's looking for a mega, mega great faith. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? That is the question. Why he said that? Jesus is looking for a mustard, is not looking for a mustard seed faith, but a mega faith. Because why Jesus, look at me, why the scriptures are asking for that question? Why, what the scriptures ask for that question? Why, why? Because in the end time, great faith will be a very rare commodity. Not everybody is going to have a big faith in the end time. It's going to be very tough to find it. Why is that? Mega faith is looking for his return. Is going up with Jesus. That mega faith is the one that's going up with Jesus. Why is it that God... Is looking for that mega faith. It would become a very rare commodity to find. That's why in Israel, when he came the first time, only two people had mega faith. Remnant again. The centurion and the Syrophoenician women. So you see why? Because to have a mega faith, you need to hear. First, the hearing is connected. If you come to a service and you don't hear, it, it just, you wasted your time. So in the end time, it will be a rare commodity. It will be rare to find people with big faith. You comprende? Yeah. Number two, how does it look like? Great faith. The great mega faith is looking for, has expectation for Jesus to come back. 
That mega faith is ready. Yeah. Number two, the mega faith is what defines the remnant. Romans chapter 11, verse 3 and 4. The picture, what's the picture of it? The Lord, the, the Lord they have killed pro thy prophet. Romans chapter 11, verse 3. And down the altars and left alone and then sick my life. Verse 4. But, but said the answer unto him, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have no vow, bow to the need to the image of Baal. Um, you will see verse 5. And then he said, even so, that is the present time also. There is a remnant. There is a remnant according to the election of grace. Who is the remnant? Is the chosen by God after you obey God. God shows you before you obey. I mean, when you obey, he made a decision. That's a previous knowledge. Then God said, I will choose you by grace. So this mega faith defines the end time remnant. In other words, you're not going to find it in all over the church. You're going to find it in very few people. And you know they're the remnant. 